Right, I'm Gaina Gosling. Um, I'm part of R&D Tax. Um, I work with clients to identify any research and development work that they've done and help them to claim it back. Today, I'm here with Sarah Gilchrist, who is the Operations Director of Canaful Limited. Hi, Sarah. Hello, good morning. So could you give me um, an overview of your business, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, Canon Full Limited uh, formed in late 2019. We're based in Scotland, in Perth, and we're the only company in the EU that specialises specifically in the development and manufacturing of CBD cosmetics. Um, we're fully self-funded and, yeah, we're a year and a half into our journey. So where was R&D part of your process? Well, we were aware of the R&D um, tax uh, opportunities uh, because some of the team had worked previously in um, IT software development where you can also apply for it. So we knew it existed, but I guess we hadn't necessarily thought about the ins and outs of how it might um, work for the cosmetics industry. Okay, cool. So can you tell me a little bit about the biggest project that you worked on? Sure. So um, the biggest project for our company uh, in our year one of trading will have been the development of our white label range. Uh, so as a new business, um, we have spent a lot of our resource in that first year uh, developing these products. And some of the challenges that we were facing is how do we keep our products as natural and um, yeah, close to nature as we can, because that's really important. It's part of our ethos. It's what we stand for. And it's also a growing part of the market and what our customers are looking for. So how do we stay true to that, but obviously make sure the project products are um, have efficacy, uh, they meet all the requirements in terms of EU legislation and safety requirements, um, and you know they've got integrity and they're stable. So trying to meld all those things together and make sure you get the optimum amount of efficacy, quality, but natural products is the, some of the challenges that we were trying to overcome. Yeah, sounds like it was quite a challenge then. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it was, as always, it was you know, good fun along the way, uh, but as a result uh, of the product development that we did, we now have 18 products that we offer to our customers across five ranges. Wow, that's brilliant, isn't it? Or new products in the pipeline? Yeah, well, uh, MPD is obviously part of any FMCG company's uh, lifeblood, you need to make sure that you're staying ahead of the competition and offering your customers something that they can offer to their consumers uh, to make sure that they're meeting new trends and new requirements and staying compliant with changing regulations. So it's definitely going to be part of our ongoing um, business. And um, yeah, I mean, stay tuned. We'll, we'll see what's part, what's growing, where the opportunities are, and be developing new products in line with the opportunities. Brilliant. So do you think you could have made the correct judgments about claiming your R&D without advice? Uh, well, when I think about this, the support and the help that the advice um, offered us, I think I split it into two categories. So one would be, um, I think without the external advice, we would have maybe missed out on some of the opportunities to claim in that, um, what I was probably unaware of was that you can claim for activities associated with R&D for products that you might end up not commercialising in the end because you might end up essentially getting into a, um, a dead end and they're not viable. Uh, but the time and resource and costs spent on that investigation is still eligible. So that's maybe something that we wouldn't have picked up on. And, you know, as with any good R&D, there's a few of those along the way. Um, and then I think the other thing is, just working through the process would have taken us a lot longer uh, in terms of the amount of you know management time spent processing it all because I think it's just a natural inclination when you're less confident about something you move with less speed um, so I think we, 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 we've just slowed us down so having someone to uh, partner with that does this sort of activity day in day out knows what the rules are knows um, where the opportunities are, where the risks are, and can give that impartial guidance, you know, um, really helped us quickly distill and formulate what our cases and our projects could be and allowed us to progress with speed. 
Excellent. And that's a brilliant point because so many people like you don't think they can claim for <laughs> negative R&D. But that is R&D, isn't it? As you say, that's the whole thing about R&D. Some win and some don't. So it's R&D. Well, and you can't, and you, can't uh, you know, by definition, you shouldn't be applying for it if it's a foregone conclusion that you know what the outcome will be. Exactly. So that perfect. Lovely answer. <laughs> so, um, so were you happy with the outcome of the R&D claim and, and roughly how much did you receive? So our claim was worth about £8,000, uh, which was uh, great news. I mean, we're a relatively young business, we're fully self-funded and obviously uh, we've been riding out a global pandemic. So, you know, £8,000 that, you know, was available to us is really good. You know, we can use that either for investment in equipment or to grow the top line um, so actually that money that we've got we are now reinvesting in advertising to help us grow our sales brilliant excellent i'm glad it was of use <laughs> so so how long did the actual process take you in the end well i would say that the process itself um i think from when we agreed and signed off in the letter of engagement to when we had the final documentation that you were then able to um, quality review and submit on our behalf. I say that's probably about a month, but that's the first time we've done it. So if we were going to the process and we knew exactly what paperwork we needed and had all the information you know, ready to go, which we'll be able to do this year because we've been through the process once already, I would say that that probably is a two week process. Um, and then it was approximately three or four weeks between when you had all that information and the money was in our bank. Excellent. That was good then. So, yeah. um, so how has the experience of claiming R&D tax credits impacted your future plans and will the claim pay a part in future funding decisions? So I think, um, as I said, we've been able to reinvest the uh, credit that we got back in advertising support uh, top line growth, which is great. And I think uh, whilst we're aware of the R&D tax a credit um, opportunity going into the business I think what we'd not really bottomed out was potentially the, the size of it and, and what that looked like and timings etc so going into next year for our new operating plan and budget we'll be able to have a, a firmer idea as to what that amount could be and the timings and you know bake that in with a bit more confidence into our business plan for next year. Excellent okay. Are you likely to recommend us from r yes. tax? Definitely, definitely. So things that I would pull, pull out um, in terms of the service were um, gain it yourself because you were the only person I really dealt with out of the company. Uh, fully personable, went above and beyond. Um, I know you had some challenges with you know, the working from home arrangements at some points, but you found a way to, to keep in touch with us. Um, really quick to respond, uh, super helpful uh personable you know like when you're doing this sort of thing as a business for the first time it could be very easy to end up working with an advisor that you know kind of makes you feel a bit stupid that you don't know all the rules but obviously that's the reason we're going to a third party that's an expert in this area so you never did that uh, fully personable and i would definitely recommend oh thank you 